Hello, odd people. Uh, three things to briefly talk about. Uh, number one is news uh, earnings coming up this week. Number two is battery swap data. And uh, number three is insurance registrations. Uh, so number one, some of you asked if I could make a video on news earnings uh, to see how the numbers look like. And, uh, and basically as far as earning per share revenue or margins and things like that. Um, usually I do this before earnings to, to have a feel, but I think um, uh, this time it's been uh, challenging, but I'm going to try my best to do it. So no promises, but I will, I will give it a shot. Uh, number two is battery swap. Battery swap. Uh, data, in my opinion, uh, really is, is, is crucial to NEO and to retail investors. I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, are in NEO because of its model. And, uh, and the key uh, ingredient or key part of the model is the battery swap. And we made so many videos in the past uh, discussing battery swap. Uh, and, uh, and also we've done analysis uh, one of the videos is hidden gem, battery swap hidden gem, is hidden gem, right? Uh, we've done analysis where we had projections and, uh, and data and things to, uh, you know, give us an overview of what's happening with the NEO's battery swap. So it's really crucial. And also the fact that NEO had uh, many partnerships earlier in the year and actually even late last year. Um, says that many uh, of the big companies in China uh, bought into the idea of battery swap and didn't want to do their own battery swap. They, they would just jo sorry, join NEO. And uh, that uh, says a lot. It says that NEO is literally franchising battery swap and also that uh, NEO battery swap becomes like standard in uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in this process, right? So it is, it's a crucial to see whether uh, the data we thought, you know, uh, or projected is actually in line, uh, is actually, or the data we have today is in line with what we, we projected in the past, right? So uh, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll have the uh, video tomorrow. Uh, the third one is insurance registrations. Uh, insurance registrations, uh, some of you asked to make comments on a YouTuber who claimed to know the uh, root cause for why uh, the insurance registration numbers uh, were low. Uh, I asked to watch the video, whatever. I did watch the video, and I think that the information looks uh, looked genuine to me. Uh, and uh, and it's, ac it's actually based on sources and uh, whatever so and it's also in line with what we've been thinking all along and that is that uh, uh, there is an issue we don't know what it was uh, and i called it could be a bottleneck or something um, and uh, um, and then it turns out to be uh, you know a, a, a license plate registrations in shanghai or whatever we don't know 100 percent but I would think that that's a likely uh, issue. Um, so the, uh, the thing is that when we mention a uh, bottleneck, bottleneck could be manufacturing, could be supply management, it could be uh, logistic, it could be anything. Uh, license plate registrations, that could be a bottleneck. If there's an issue there that we don't know, uh, it could be a bottleneck. It would cause a jump later on as well. So, anyways, this is this is uh, this is how it is. Uh, how do we know we don't have a demand issue? Some guys mentioned or a guy mentioned demand issue. We do have no. We don't have a demand issue. This guy is a short. Whoever is saying this is a short, uh, and there is no demand issue. Uh, how do you know that? You know because you have to wait three months to get the vehicle. If there is demand issue. Uh, uh, then you would get the vehicle right away. You probably can get it from the parking lot. I probably knew would do a lot of incentives to uh, give away vehicles. No, we don't have a demand issue. Okay. 
Um, but I want to make some comments in general on YouTubers. Uh, this is for the future. I think it's healthy to watch, uh, uh, to get information from different YouTubers. Uh, because we come from, we have different backgrounds. Um, you know, my experience, for example, is different than someone else's experience. Um, I, I don't live in China, so I don't have the information. Somebody who lives in China may have, uh, you know, a lot more, uh, you know, field information than, uh, than myself. But maybe I'm, I'm, I have strength in something, maybe analysis or whatever. Uh, the other guy has something else. And so I think different, some people do also research on different areas. So I think it's good and healthy to, um, to uh, you know, uh, watch different videos and use our judgment to, um, you know, to have a feel whether the information is true or not. You know, this is what I think. Uh, my opinion is that uh, uh, all the YouTubers, all the YouTubers, probably like four or five of them, that we know, uh, they, they're genuine people. They're trying their best. You know, some of them could be, you know, a little cocky or whatever or whatever. It doesn't matter. But I think genuinely they're trying their best to uh, give out uh, true information. You know, different styles, you know, different style of, uh, you know, techniques or whatever. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone would, um, you know, pass on wrong information. I, I don't think they do that. Okay, so, uh, looks good to me, uh, things are positive, we just see a bump, as I said in the previous video, is a bump on the road, and that, that would be it, okay, uh, that's it, and uh, please do your own uh, research and due diligence, okay, thanks a lot, talk to you later, bye-bye.